and welcome to the another episode of Beyond the Score podcast that brings you the views and opinion of those who are in the news. Brought to you by Khel Now. I am your host Ashish Negi. It's been a while since we have done a you know episode for the this this podcast series, but today is a big reason. You know, I think the today's guest is a big reason why we're doing it. And and the previous episode, I said I want to do more in studio podcast, but I think. Um, the today's guest of course can't come to the st- studio right now in new delhi but hopefully in going ahead we can bring him to our studio and do a proper show with him but uh, to introduce our today's guest is he has been a news around the indian football circuit recently a tweet on him by the manchester united legend uh, rio ferdinand was followed by replies from aff general secretary or conversation with mr saji parvakaran with the same person and this has sparked the debate of indian origin players playing for india again because this has been a topic for last say 10 12 13 14 15 years from the days of michael chopra to harmeet singh nitin sansara and i think the now one of the currently the best indian player indian origin player in europe yan dhanda who is currently playing for ross county in scotland and has been doing very well individually in the in in this in the season and you know he's a indian origin uh, indian origin person through his father's side and of course he's eligible to play for india in in the eyes of fifa's rules which is say that because his grandfather was born in india and once upon a time he has a indian passport so that's make him eligible to play for india alongside england where he was born yan welcome to the show how are you doing brother Oh, I'm good. Thank you. Very, very good. Um, nice to finally meet you. Nice to be on the show. Uh, been wanting to do this for a while, so yeah, happy to be here. Again, I am sure the our viewers and listeners, you know, uh, they will straight away want to come into the topic of uh, which sparked the debate of you playing for India. Is it possible? How it is possible legally? You know what FIFA rule says, and and I've covered those bases for you guys. You know, and and we'll come to it. But I think it's important for us to know, Yan. Uh, what he has been doing in his career, how he started, and I think because uh, uh, players like Yan is an inspiring story for not just for the Indian Indian people or Indian origin people, it's also for South Asian people because in UK in past we have seen that how tough for a South Asian footballer to break into the English football system, but you know recently we have seen the example of Hamza Chaudhary uh, playing for Leicester. There are more example of Pakistani origin player playing in the lower tier of English football, and of course, you know Michael Chopra, uh, who played for Newcastle in the Championship Premier League, who eventually came to play in ISL also, who has done well. But I think uh, recently the Indian origin players who has been doing very well in Europe, in England also. Yeah, let's start straight away. You know, uh, when you started your career uh, as a, as an Asian origin, I think there were challenges. Uh, now. It it is more streamlined, but we all are aware of challenges of South Asian player facing in in England. How was your uh, you know uh, uh, when you started as a very young kid? Your journey from to became what you are right now. Uh, obviously, when I was little, I think I started playing football when I was four years old. So obviously, started walking and then obviously started kicking a ball at a very very young age. So I was lucky that I started early and obviously had. Uh, quite a lot of help from my family. My dad, my uncles, they loved football, and I was always around football from a young age. So, I think going to watch my dad and going to watch my two uncles because I was around football so much, I just kind of naturally fell in love with it. I always had a ball with me and was always playing whilst watching my dad and my uncles. So, football was always a big part of my life, and obviously because I was around it so much and always practicing football and just constantly playing it, then I uh, I became good at it. I uh, fell in love with it. I just it was all I wanted to do from the age of four. So at seven, the age of seven, I started playing for some clubs where I was from: Aston Villa, Wolves, West Brom, Warsaw. I was training with with all of them teams uh, on different days of the week. And then when I got to the age of eight, I decided that I wanted to to play for West Brom. It was it was a massive club, and obviously when when you're that age, you just want to play for a professional team. So I was doing well and decided to. To sign for West Brom, where I loved it, I worked with some of the best coaches in in the whole of England. So I was lucky, really, to to be coached by good, such good coaches. And obviously, because I love football so much, I just kept improving uh, day by day, training every single day, and it's got me to where I am today. I've a, a lot of obstacles on the way and challenges, but yeah, I, uh, I started playing football early, and obviously, my, my start was at West Brom. 
and I think that's the one of the major difference between the football in for example in Europe or in India uh, signing for a club opportunity to you came at when you were eight nowadays in Indian football that opportunity generally come around 14 or 15 you know that's where a player sign a youth contract in India so I think that's also the one improvement which Indian football need to have that we need to introduce our young players early to the football you know like just like you had it opportunity I think Indian football need to have something very similar uh, Jan you talked about obstacles you know was there any discrimination at very, very early age or it was a good ride for you because I have talked to various Indian origin or, or South Asian origin players playing in Europe so their their early days was not very easy you know uh, they faced lots of difficulties from their own teammates from the opponent teams or our fans or you know other uh, 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 players parents w what was with you in regarding that uh, I think when I was young it was there was obviously challenges I think that going back to when I was six seven eight years old obviously I, uh, I didn't let it phase me too much but obviously you don't really see many Asian footballers now in 2023 so back then there was even less so I'd, I'd look different to, to people I was playing against, people I was playing with. So obviously people would have the comment and obviously racial comments and stuff like that. But to be honest, I did always get it from a young age, but because I was always better than them and I was probably the best in, in every game I played, I didn't let it affect me too much and I didn't really think too much about it because I was so young and I knew that I was better than these people. So I just seen it as there was just saying it because there wasn't as good as me. So it didn't really affect me. I did definitely have it from a young age, but I would say that maybe when I was little, I was obviously very strong. I had the support of my mum and dad, and they always would tell me that people are always going to say stuff because you're better than them. So I've learned from it from a young age and learned how to deal with it, really. So, yeah, it was. I had difficult times growing up, and people would say stuff to me, and it wasn't nice, but you learn you learn to just ignore it from a young age. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I look different, and... Obviously, I'm not the same as most people I'm playing with or playing against. But when I joined West Brom, I was quite lucky, actually, because there was five or six players who actually had Asian background. So it was nice. There was a an Indian boy in my team. There was a Pakistani boy in my team, an Iraqi boy in my team, and an Afghanistan boy in my team. So it was quite a good team, actually. There was a, a real mix. So obviously, everyone felt included. We was probably one of the best age groups at West Brom in a long time. So... Yeah, we had uh, the support of each other and obviously our parents were, were all close. So, yeah, it was very good. And West Brom, because we had such a diverse team, we uh, we got on really well and we always helped each other when someone said something or we was always there for each other. So I was quite lucky, but I can imagine that most people who have that Asian background don't have people who look like them in their team. So in that sense, I was quite lucky. But I've had uh, a lot of obstacles, obviously, when I, I was 14 and I left West Brom to go to Liverpool. A lot of men and adults would say to me that I left Liverpool at 14. I left West Brom at 14 uh, because I was after money or like just like arrogant or wanted more money at Liverpool. But the truth is I was 14 years old. Uh, not many people in life at the age of 20, 21, 26 get an opportunity to play for Liverpool. And I think at 14, if you have an opportunity to play for Liverpool, it's pretty much impossible to say no. All I could think about was putting on a Liverpool Liverpool top and telling all my friends and family I play for Liverpool. So it was nothing to do with that. Obviously, that was difficult. You got men, grown men, uh, messaging saying yeah, money grabbing, all that kind of stuff. So from a young age, I've had to deal with with tough times, and obviously, it was nothing more than just wanting to play for Liverpool and put that Liverpool shirt on because not many people can say that they've done that. And uh, you, you know, you touch upon that, you know, signing for West Brom at eight was itself a massive uh, thing for a young kid. Uh, but then, of course, then you moved to Liverpool. What was the major difference between the academy structure of West Brom and Liverpool, which you felt, you know, that this is the, okay, this is a major difference between both the clubs? Uh, to be honest, I think I've been, I can say I've been very lucky at West Brom and Liverpool because I've probably worked with some of the best coaches in the whole of in the whole of Europe, let alone England. So when I was at West Brom, I had the best coaches there that have now gone on to be first team managers, that have gone on to be first team assistant coaches. For example, Aaron Danks was my coach at West Brom. He's now at Middlesbrough, assistant manager. I had Jimmy Shan, who's now assistant manager at Sheffield Wednesday with Jamie Smith and Darren Moore. 
So I had both of them from a young age at, at West Brom. And then at Liverpool, I had Pepin Linders, who's assistant manager at Liverpool, Michael Beale, who's the Rangers manager, Neil Critchley, who was previous Blackpool and QPR manager. So I've had some amazing coaches. So in that sense, it was very similar. They had similar qualities. They were very good coaches, knew how to bring out the best of you. But I think the main difference playing for Liverpool is obviously you're playing for one of the biggest clubs in the world. When you're playing against other teams, they, they have that fear that you're Liverpool. You have the expectation that you have to win. You're Liverpool. If you're playing against another team, obviously Liverpool is nine times out of ten going to be the big club. So you have to perform. You have to do well. They say these these kids are playing for Liverpool. Like you have to you have to show why you play for Liverpool, and that's that's the biggest difference. You're there. You you pretty much have to win all the time. You have to carry that expectation of playing for Liverpool and winning games and showing people why you are the one that plays for Liverpool and not them because. When you play against other teams, they're they're fighting to play for Liverpool. It's everyone's dream to play for a team like Liverpool. So you pretty much have to show when you play against them that this there's a reason that you play for Liverpool and you have to show that all the time from a young age. So it was amazing. Honestly, my time at West Brom and my time at Liverpool was was incredible and not many people can say that they've, they've played for West Brom or Liverpool. So for me, to be able to say that, I'm very proud. And and how did you uh, you know cope up with the pressure of being at a club like Liverpool because it's not the biggest club in England it's one of the biggest club in the world football how did you cope up with that pressure that you are playing for the Liverpool Yeah it's different obviously at West Brom you you compete with the best kids around Birmingham and obviously I'm confident enough to say when I was at West Brom I, I was probably one of the best kids in Birmingham and that's where I stood out I went to Liverpool but then you get to Liverpool and you're competing with the best kids your age in the whole world because Liverpool scout all over and if anyone gets an opportunity to play for Liverpool nine times out of ten they're going to say yes so you get there and you compete against people older than you that are the best from their country they play represent their country and so obviously there is a lot of pressure but obviously you've got to believe in yourself you know that you've been brought to Liverpool for a reason you can't just stop working now you're at Liverpool Liverpool, I was only 14 years old. I had a long way to go. Just because I went to Liverpool at 14 doesn't mean you're going to make it professionally. So you have to keep working. You have to compete against even better players than you was competing with back at West Brom. So, yeah, but just to put on that Liverpool top was all I was thinking about. And to say I've done it was, was amazing. Uh, obviously, I was in the academy and dreamt of playing for the first team, but got to 19 and realised that Maybe I weren't going to play for the first team as much as I'd like or maybe I wouldn't play for the first team. And you have to be realistic and and maybe go somewhere else to, to fulfil your dreams. And and while you were at Liverpool, you also received your uh, England Youth International call-up. So, when what? how old you are when you receive your first England Youth call-up? Uh, I think I was 15 and 16. So I was 15, 16 and 17 when I played for England. So, yeah, that was amazing, obviously, at 15 playing... For England and the 16s is a massive thing that not many people can say. And yeah, obviously played with some amazing players from all over the country, playing for Man City, Tottenham, Arsenal, Man United, all the best players, all in, all in one team. So again, to say I've played for England at youth level is obviously something not many people can say. So I'm super proud of that. And you know, uh, you had a good education in terms of football from West Brom to Liverpool. But then eventually, uh, I remember... Uh, Liverpool, uh, you holding that Indian flag and that a picture on a Liverpool Facebook or social media, I think, which, which made lots of lots of buzz in India. Uh, I think that's where the uh, many Indian football fans were aware that, you know, okay, there's a Indian origin kid at Liverpool who's playing for the academy or might play for the senior team one day. Uh, but then the decision came to leave the Liverpool and, you know, you decided to go to Swansea City. So how, you know, you took that decision... With, did you discuss with your family or it was just with your agents or it was just based on the merit of playing more games at Swansea? Yeah, I think I got to 19 years old and I was ambitious that I wanted to play first in football. I felt like I, I was ready to, to move on and obviously start playing games professionally because that's what you dream of. And I had an opportunity to move to Swansea and it felt right. I felt like for me it was the next stage. Obviously being at Liverpool is unbelievable, but... The main dream is to play in the first team and to have your name on the back of a shirt and playing. So I had an opportunity to move to Swansea where they showed me I had a, a pathway to play 
for the first team quicker than maybe I would have at Liverpool. So that's just something I wanted to do and I'm glad I done it. I obviously managed to to make my debut the year I went there and score on my debut. So I think everything everything made sense for me to go to Swansea, which was obviously a massive club that had just been relegated from the Premier League at the time. And I think going to the Championship and start playing games was really going to kickstart my career. And I'm obviously glad I done that. And, you know, and of course, Swansea were not at the best shape, you know, in terms of the club. They had off, off the field issues, they have on field issues. And as a young kid, how difficult for you, you know, that you made your, I will say, a professional move, you know, when you are finally playing at the men's level and you went to a club and the club is not doing off the field. How difficult uh, for you was to focus just on football, despite, you know, whatever going at the club at that time? Uh, to be honest, when I got there, I think because I got there and it was a new manager, it was new staff, I felt comfortable straight away from the moment I got there. Obviously, I was working with Graham Potter and from the first time I met him, I knew that he was going to be a very, very good manager. And obviously, he's proved that from how far he's gone now. And uh, he just made everyone feel welcome. He was so good with all the players. He was new at the club, so it felt like a fresh start for me and for everyone else, obviously, when I got there. So... I was quite comfortable from the moment I arrived there and it was a it was a great, great bunch of lads and all the teammates were, were very nice and all the staff there. It's a family club that you know, I was able to treat players. So obviously I went there and I felt comfortable straight away and done really well in pre-season and obviously first game of the season managed to make my debut and score. So to go to Swansea, I think definitely was a good move and obviously I managed to play a lot of games in the Championship. And then you, you know, left for uh, Ross County, and uh, again a bit light on that move, that how that took place, and decision to leave English football to go to Scotland. You know, why was that taken from your side? Uh, so obviously, I played in under Graham Potter, and then I played two seasons under Steve Cooper, where the first season we lost it, lost in the semi-final of the playoffs, and then the year after we lost in in the final against Brentford. So we was very close to going to the Premier League, but. When Steve Cooper left, I felt like the club weren't the same anymore. I didn't feel I didn't feel like I was wanted, which obviously every player wants to feel like. And and then a new manager comes in, and I didn't feel like comfortable in the place, and didn't feel like I got a fair chance. So obviously, at the end of the season, I didn't play much. I didn't play much under the new manager, and uh, I felt like I should have. And obviously, when I had a decision to leave, there were clubs who were interested in signing me and I just had to make the right decision again for myself and I wanted, I said to my family, I said, after a tough season now, football was tough, I had tough times and, and, and I was in hard places at times so when it come to deciding which club I wanted to go to in the summer, I obviously said to my family uh, that I just wanted to go somewhere that made me feel most wanted and I was going to play and I could show what I, what I was capable of again and just have a fresh start and the manager at Ross County met me quite a few times, called me quite a few times and he made me feel wanted and that's all I wanted. Obviously, I knew I had to move quite far away and to a new league and I didn't know what to expect, but all I wanted was the manager to show me that he's going to play me and give me that opportunity for me to show what I can do. And obviously now everyone's seen what I've been doing this season uh, in the Scottish Premier League and I'm just glad I came here again. It was a tough decision to move this far away and to leave the championship, but I just wanted to go somewhere where I knew I could showcase what I'm about and I feel like I've been doing that. We've got more games to go and I feel like I'll show it again. But yeah, it's been a it's been a good decision. I, I felt at the time that Ross County was right for me. I had this gut feeling that Ross County was the place for me to go so I could play games, consistent games against big teams and show what I could do against big crowds. And obviously, I've been doing that now and I've, I know I've got more to come towards the end of the season. So, yeah, I'm glad I came to Ross County. It's, I think it's proved why I came here and now people realise why I did come here. So, at the backing of the manager, and just felt wanted. And when I've been playing on the pitch, I've, I've showed that and had so much confidence. And uh, there's a fun fact, Jan, which I want to tell you, that you've played in English League uh, for an English club, then you've played in, uh, you know, a Wales club for an English League, now you're playing in Scotland. So you eventually have covered, you know, most of the UK in terms of football, I think only Northern Ireland may be remaining, so I don't think you're going to go there. So, you know, and, and currently the Ross County is not having a good season, they are, you know, uh, 
one place away from the relegation of course they can go to the relegation playoff uh, individually how how your season is going on because you have scored three goals i think there are the four assists you have and i think in, in terms of chances created you are on the high in the table you know uh, so i think how how, how was that in terms of uh, your season which is going on and uh, you know uh, how, what uh, uh, can the club uh, come out of this relegation zone in the uh, in the remaining games I think that obviously it's easy for me to say, but I really do believe we've been unlucky in quite a few games. We've probably lost when we should have drawn, and we've we've drawn when we when we should have won. So we have been very unlucky, but obviously that's easy to say. We're we're second bottom in the league, but we have six or seven games to go now. So I'm a, I'm confident that we're going to stay up. We're going to uh, push up the league into into the safety spaces. So. I think in the next few games are obviously very crucial and then the split and we have to play each other again. So I feel like we, we will be fine. I'm confident of that. And obviously I've been creating, I've been scoring and assisting, but I have to step up even more now and, and, and fight to keep Ross County in the league because the way the club's treated me and the way the club is with people, this club deserves to be in the Premier League in Scotland. And it's, a, it's an amazing club. The fans have been great with me from the moment. I arrived and it gives me a lot of confidence on the pitch. So I'm determined to to contribute and, and keep Ross County in the Premier League. And I think we will do that as a team because it is a very good team. And like I said, I've been unlucky. But I think that obviously I have been creating, which the stats have shown, and been a, a dangerous player in the league. But obviously now I have to um, take that responsibility on my shoulders even more and keep creating, keep scoring, keep assisting because my aim is to keep Ross County in the Premier League of Scotland. And uh, because you know we don't have access to the live matches, what position you are playing for Ross County? You know, are you playing the, on the wings or are you playing the eight or ten? Uh, so mainly I've been playing as a ten, but in quite a few games I've played on the left and I've played as an eight. Uh, some games in the second half I've dropped into a holding midfield, like a, a four-six kind of role. So I've been playing quite a lot of positions. We've played a, a box, we've played a, a ten on its own. I've played on the left and I've played as a Night. So, yeah, I think coming to Ross County, I've obviously showed what I can do in this league. But a massive thing what I've learned while I while I have come up here is my off the ball because we don't have the ball as much as the opponent most games. So my off the ball has improved so much, which I'm grateful for from the manager. He's helped me so much with that, and I think it's showing. I uh, rather than just a number ten now, I probably am more of like an eight, a box to box midfielder that can play on the left, that can play as a ten. So. Yeah, I've definitely improved this season and I've always said if I had a run it run of games, four, five, six games in a row, I'd show what I could do and I've came here and I've done that and, and I've showed people with consistent games what you can do and that's all every player needs. Okay, and, and I think uh, also uh, hopefully you keep them in the you know championship and I think uh, there is of course a connection of uh, uh, SPL to the Indian football. I don't know, you're aware on but the late uh, 1930-35 Mohamed Salim I was the Indian origin uh, Indian player who went from India to play, uh, you know, um, to have a trial with Celtic, and you, you, he was supposed to sign for them. He eventually came back to India. Uh, eventually, are two Indian footballers also Sunil Chetri, who is a current legend and the captain, and the JJ also went to a trial with Rangers, you know, and uh, they eventually, of course, the deal didn't take place. But they eventually are Indian international women's international Bala Devi who uh, played for Rangers in the, you know, uh, for the women's team. So, of course, there is a connection between the India, Indian and the, for the SPL. And I think you are the another chapter in that, uh, how to say, a tradition of Indian Indian people connecting with SPL. So, I think it's great to know. Uh, and, and are there any Asian player, more Asian player in the SPL as compared to English football or English leagues? Uh, to be honest, there's, um, there's quite a few Asian players actually Celtic have five or six Japanese players who are very, very, very good. Some of the, the best players I've actually played against, including the championship. So, yeah, they are quite a few to watch out for. They play um, for Celtic. They play a few of them play for the Japan national team. Uh, there's, there's a few of them, yes. They are very, very good players. So, keep an eye on them. Yeah, and that has been great, you know, information regarding that, you know, what have we been doing till now. Let's come to the straight to the important topic. Uh, did Rio uh, told you that he's going to tweet something about you on a Twitter? Because considering, you know, the the reach he has on social media is huge. 
nowadays he's just not an ex footballer he's also active on social media on a youtube he does lots of stuff so did he actually told about you know um, that he's going to tweet you tweet something about you on twitter uh no i didn't know i actually uh, i do know him through um through a friend so who's his good friends with him and he has texted me a few times just saying like well done and i've been playing well so i didn't know he was going to put it on twitter and obviously i was grateful when he done that and obviously it made a massive explosion on twitter because of how big he is and for someone like him to recognize uh the, the good work i've been putting in and obviously after a tough season last season to come here and express myself and show what i can do and real Ferdinand to recognize it and and put it on twitter was massive so i was so happy when i seen it and hopefully it can help me in 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 playing for india and uh, there's a, there's a one more thing you know which uh, i want to uh, uh touch up on that uh, till now in past also for example you know uh, michael chopra wanted to play for india and there's there's a there's a feeling among uh, hardcore indian football fans that you know all of us know about the rule regarding the passport so indian government is not going to change the rule regarding the passport over the night you know of course uh, fifa's rules have been changed again and again regarding the you know uh, the citizenship rule regarding uh, playing for uh, a, a international team or a country you know if you want to change your citizenship or your uh, association with the particular uh, fa so i think uh, uh, do you feel uh, you know straight away people have been asking change your because just like af of general secretary said uh, change your passport and play for india can you can you tell people that how tough is that and I, it is not that simply for, uh, simple that you know over the night you decide and you can change your passport so that you can play for india you know just let people aware that how difficult for a, as a individual for you to change your passport now at at this stage of your life and so that you can play for india yeah obviously it's it's very difficult as it stands if i change my passport or uh, i wouldn't be able to play football in europe which i've obviously done my whole career and uh every single player from all over the world dreams of playing in europe and obviously i've managed to do that what not many people can do and obviously a lot of people dream of so to be able to play in Europe will be will be difficult to give up now after working so hard and playing in Europe and obviously as family I have a young son who's um, who's very young and obviously playing here in England with where my family is 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 very important because it's it's some of the best leagues in the whole world and when I see that other countries have started to change their rules and allowing OCI players and and like people for, who have that heritage to play for their country and represent it it obviously I was I immediately wanted to play for India and I wanted to re- represent my country because obviously it's a big part of me and it, it has a big place in my heart so I I immediately wanted to play for India and obviously a lot of countries have started to do it now and you've seen how much it's benefited them in the in the world cup and the biggest tournaments around the world so I think for me to play for India is is a, is obviously a dream for me but to give up my passport is, is is very difficult at the moment because i want to continue playing in in europe and showing what i can do in europe on some of the biggest stages and and it, and it's hard for me to give up my passport like i've said so yeah obviously i, I do want to hopefully try and find a solution for me to fulfill that dream of playing for india and going to a world cup with india because it's it's what it's what i dream of but at the moment there's some difficult circumstances that hopefully we can we can get past and allow it to happen so in terms of the eligibility you know uh, yan is eligible to play for india because his grandfather was born in india once upon a time he had i am sure is a birth certificate from india he had indian passport you know in his life and then of course that's how he's eligible to play for india according to fifa rules recently fifa has clarified earlier fifa used to take any other id as identity proof for the players but during the 2022 world cup in qatar they have clarified put it on their rules you know that uh, a id is will be only a permanent international passport they will take but i'm sure that considering the various changes fifa has done you know in past uh, there's a recently a one rule which got changed in 2020 after 2018 world cup al munir who played for barcelona and he played 15 minutes for spain in 2014 when he was a hot property at barcelona and uh, in 2018 uh, you know uh, he was eligible to play for i think for for morocco uh, yeah he was eligible to play for morocco but he not able to play for morocco because this rule of that he played for uh, in official game for spain for 15 minutes and this 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 whole uh, uh, 
you know, situation went to the international court. Eventually, FIFA changed that rule in 2020. Now, they have what they have done is that if you have played up to three games, a qualifiers or a friendly for a, a particular nation, and if you're still under 21, you can change your, you know, international team uh, if you have not played in official competition, official tournament like World Cup or Euros or AFC Asian Cup. So they made the changes. I'm sure if, say, All India Football Federation can convince uh, Indian government because I am sure, Yan, you had the OSI card, right, which which legally tells that Yan is overseas citizen of India, so which is, you know, from the Indian government. Uh, so they, if yeah. somehow uh, the Indian government and AFF can come together on this, that an OSI card holder can play for India in terms of playing football, and then the AFF goes to uh, FIFA to, you know, to make the changes in their rules and allow OSI card holder to play for India. So do you think that considering you already have that, that should be uh, more than enough for uh, 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 for you to play for India? Yeah, obviously I have the OSI card, the OSI card ready, so I'm just waiting on the, the government and the, obviously the Indian Football Federation to, to come to an agreement to allow it to happen because I think that it's going to be beneficial. I think, obviously, I'm desperate to go and play for India and connect with the fans and show what I can do. And I think if players like me from Europe that can represent India can can go there and play for India, I think it's going to be beneficial. I think the Indian fans deserve their country that, that they're proud of to, to be at a World Cup and play in the biggest tournament in the whole world. And that's what they deserve. And I think that if I go over there and, and players that play in Europe go over there to, to help the team, all we want to do is help the team and for the fans to be able to go to a World Cup and, and be proud of their country playing against some of the, the best players and seeing them live against their country will make them feel proud. And that's what I want to do. It's part of me. It's part of where I'm from. It's in my heart and it's where I want to go and play. And obviously there's difficult circumstances at the moment, but I think we're just waiting for that agreement to happen, to allow it to happen and, Obviously, the, the dream is for India to be at a World Cup and I think it's only going to be beneficial to have the best players from all over the world, wherever they're playing, to be able to represent their country and, and take them to a World Cup. And obviously, then it benefits the, the players in the ISL as well. For If they get higher in the FIFA rankings, they can come and play in Europe, which obviously everyone dreams of playing in, in the big tournaments that everyone watches all over the world. And I think it's beneficial for, for everyone, for the fans to potentially be able to go to a World Cup for the players in, in, in Europe to be able to represent their country, what they love and want to want to represent and play in, in a World Cup. And then obviously for the, the players in the international team that play in the, in the Indian League, they want to come and play for Europe and test themselves against some of the best players in the whole world that people think are the big, big stars. And obviously that's what Indian players deserve as well. So I think it's beneficial for everyone, for everyone who... As an association with India, it's it's massive, and I just really, really, really hope that some sort of agreement can happen to to make this uh, make this dream come true. And I think uh, there's another you know people are critical of this issue that you know uh, why should be allowing you know player, people with Indian origin to play for India. It's not that we are asking to naturalize the players, you know, which many Asian country like UAE, like Hong Kong, has been doing. They are giving passport. Uh, to the Brazilian, for example, to the African players to play for the country. We're just asking the Indian heritage, uh, you know, the, the Yan is connected to India. He has a connection to India. He's not just, just like a random footballer playing in Europe. And then we're asking to give him passport to play for India. He has the Indian heritage. He has the Indian connection, you know, and he is Indian by heart. So I think that's the one thing. It's not that we are, we are asking to uh, random Brazilian player or African player to play for India. He is the OSI card holder. So that OSI card full form is overseas citizen of India. And, and you know, that's already registered with the Indian government. And I think uh, this debate has been very uh, long going debate, and especially in the tennis, because there's a cases of uh, uh, Indian people in US who are tennis player who wants to play for India. And this started early 2000. You know, and there's some there's a debate going on from since then. Then, of course, there's a there's the debate in football. Uh, I think it eventually came up during the uh, Michael Chopra uh, scene of playing for India in 2011 Asian AFC Asian Cup. You know, and I think uh, uh, and you know 
throughout the world it is happening you know uh, there are players who are born in france playing for tunisia there is a, another example recently the zidane iqbal who plays for manchester united he was eligible to play for pakistan and iraq eventually he uh, picked iraq over pakistan because pakistan was banned at that time you know uh, there was another example of hannibal masbury who born in france played for france youth team he decided to play for tunisia in the world cup you know and uh, talking about south asia for example pakistan allows uh, pakistan afghanistan allows their you know origin players or you know their overseas uh, uh players to play for their national team and of course you know there are more example in asian football who are doing it uh and of course there is pros and cons of this also you know the indian the indian government or sports authority will say you know we want more opportunity uh, for the indian who are born in india to play but i think it's it's not like that uh, somebody is asking to reserve the quota for overseas player if they are good enough you know in terms of quality i think they sh they should be playing and what this can do is that now 48 teams are allowed in uh, fifa world cup uh, from next world cup which is 2026 which means 8.5 slots for india so india have i will not say easier route to the world cup but now they have higher chance considering they are double the slots available if india can finally you know scout some of these players like yan 4 5 indian origin players in, in position where we don't have a good talent for example striker or attacking position can massively improve the indian team and you know and we we might go to the higher in fifa rankings and we might go to the you know next round of afc asian cup and eventually the fifa world cup qualifiers so yeah uh, sajid prabhakan who is a general newly appointed general secretary of uh, uh, in, uh, india afa for example he was also part of the fifa in past other than his tweet have anybody from aff or a general secretary contacted you after the you know recent conversation on twitter uh yeah i actually had a conversation on a whatsapp call with sharji uh he went he went pretty well actually i i show i told him how much i wanted to play for india and i wanted to represent my country and india fans deserve to to go to a world cup and watch their country play at a world cup and he agreed and he he told me that he he wants me to play for the national team he'd love me he'd love for me to play for the national team and he wants to make it happen but obviously the government and the federation need to come to an agreement together to allow it to happen similar to other countries what we've spoken about but yeah it was a positive conversation i'm hoping i'm i'm really i'm hoping that they do come to some sort of agreement so we can make it happen because the world cup now is is not is not long away and like i said india deserves to be there the fans deserve to be there and it'd be amazing so i do hope that a conversation with Sharji and everything I've been trying to do to to make it happen can can all contribute and and it can happen but yeah me and Sharji had a good conversation he he showed how much that he wanted me to play for India and says that he he, he wants it for the team and obviously it'll benefit a lot of people and and the big the big dream for everyone not just myself is India at a World Cup I think it's one of the most amazing countries that deserves to be at a World Cup and I think that me playing for India alongside some of the other OCI card holders playing for India it's going to be so beneficial for everyone and obviously that's the dream. And and you know uh, as there's another player in in British football a Danny Bath uh, who was the Wolves captain when they got promoted to Premier League then he played in Premier League currently I think he's playing for Stoke City. uh he has been also been to india i i met him you know and we have talked multiple time he's also been you know vocal of this if i have osi card you know why can't i play because uh, to to talk about legally osi card holders get a lots of benefit uh from the indian government in terms of what they can do or what other people can't do in india you know uh, they can travel to india whenever they want they can do business in india they can they can earn money in india so i think if you are allowing these things and you're already recognizing them as a overseas uh, citizen of india the present indian government uh, for example narendra modi government since they came in the power in 2014 they have simplified lots of rules and regulation for overseas citizen of india earlier there used to be a two two cards for the you know overseas citizen of india and the uh, uh, person of indian origins they in eventually merged those two card together i think kian do you have any message for the indian government that you know why they should be allowing osi card holders to play for india in sports for example i just think that obviously india is a massive country that has a lot of proud indian people and like i've said many times in the, in this in this chat and on this video that Indian fans 
travel across the whole of India to watch their team play. They love football. They love everything about football and the sport. And like I said, Indian fans deserve their country to be at a World Cup. It's one of the biggest countries in the world. And it has some amazing players from playing in the Indian League, in Europe, everywhere. And I think that India deserve to be in the big tournaments and showing what they can do against the biggest stars of, of football. And they have an opportunity to do that. And I think that the OCI card holders playing for India is going to be beneficial, so, like I said, to go to a World Cup. And then obviously for the players in the, in the Indian League to have that opportunity once going up the FIFA ranking to potentially make that move to Europe where everybody wants to play and Indian players. I, I, I've spoke to a few. I haven't spoke to every single one, but I'm pretty much confident that they'd love to play in the Champions League and the biggest tournaments in football. And if India climb up the FIFA rankings with the help of OCI cardholders, then they can fulfil their dreams and play in the Champions League. And that's what every single footballer wants to play in. So I think it's so beneficial for the fans, for the country, for the Indian, uh, the ISL players. I just think that it's so beneficial for everyone and OCI cardholders representing their country. Well, obviously they have the heritage. They're not just random footballers. It means so much to them to be able to play for India. I think that it's beneficial for everyone, not just for us being able to represent our country, but for the whole country, whether they're players, fans, just as a country, it would just be massive for India to be in a World Cup. And I think that this is the biggest opportunity we can have by improving the squad and having them Indian Super League players to play with people from Europe and compare themselves with us and see where they're at. And then hopefully they, they've got that opportunity to move to Europe, play in Champions League. And that's that's what we want. We want to see Indian footballers all over the world competing against the best players. And, and you know, uh, on the other side, as I, as I touch upon, the OSI card holders can do business in India, they can earn money in India. So if they are allowed these rights, I think OSI card holders can be given a special rights to also represent India in say sports and everything you know and uh, uh, of course there is a downside of this also people have been saying I've been touched upon from sports ministry for example they say if you allow this what about other fields you know uh, say other fields the technology there's a there, there are people you know uh, who are say from Google CEO for Sundar Picha he comes says and says I also want Indian passport alongside my US passport so you know but I think sports is something very different it's it, I know I think this can be misused, but I think if government and the federations, not just AIFF, uh, for example, Indian Tennis Federation also, ITFA, they can come together, form a, a proper route, legal route to do this, you know. It can be a, you know, 15-year passport or 10-year passport. It can be if they say OSI card holder is, because uh, the OSI card holder can still use OSI card to travel to India. So if they somehow can legally bound this together and present the case to their uh, World Federation like FIFA, that you know we are we are we have a legal document for our government i am sure fifa has been flexible enough in past to do so and i think if they can do i think it is possible to see the osi code but it, the journey to struggle to do this is long and i think i hope yan uh, considering he is the one of the best indian player in the in, in the europe right now can be a flag bearer of this yan but there's other side people say that you are doing this for publicity you know, do you think that you need a publicity as a footballer playing in the top level in Europe that to uh, just to make some headline in India that you're doing this for publicity? Uh, I think that the people that say I'm doing it for publicity, I just, I don't really see the point in doing it. If I wanted to do it for publicity, I would have done it once many years ago. But I think that I keep every single time I have an opportunity to express how much I want to play for India, I'm doing it and, I, and I'll keep doing it until hopefully we we have that agreement where I can come and represent India. And I think that if it does ever happen, you'll see how much passion I have to, to play for India and to take India to the World Cup. Because like I said, it's just massive for the whole country. I think people have tough times and people all over the world have tough times. And I think sport brings people together. People have a 90 minute match, what just makes them happy. And imagine seeing their country at a World Cup winning games. It just, give people so much happiness and, and forget about problems and struggles that they're going through in life and they have that that escape to watch football and to be so proud of their country. And I just think, imagine the Indian fans getting to see their team at a World Cup, winning games and just having that enjoyment and it'll just bring so many people together. And this is not something uh, Jan or people who are in this are asking India to do something very different. This happens worldwide. 
uh, eventually if you see uh, France for example the team which won the World Cup of course m- many of these players were born in France but the heritage are back to Africa for example but they still take pride to represent France so I think you know we have example of Asian countries doing so we have example of Morocco who did so well in 2022 World Cup and you know the majority uh, players were not born in Morocco of that squad they're born outside so I think and, and the fans the, 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 the players have taken that you know and they are as emotional as the players who were born in, in Morocco and I, as I said we are not asking random footballers to play for India and legally this is this is this is tough route uh, uh, but yeah say for example you're still very young do you think going ahead and I think which Michael Chopra also uh, tried but didn't happen actually that going ahead say in five six years when you're playing at the top level maybe a good offer ISL is a good league you know at that time do you think for Indian player origin players ISL will become an option they come to ISL play in India and maybe then take a passport if OSI card thing doesn't happen then play for India but that also mean uh, players like you who are currently at the peak or you know at the very young age who can at the top of your powers might be on a decline and you know you're not at your best shape to play for India so do you think that that can be alternate route if OSI card things doesn't happen for players like you yeah definitely I've already spoke to my family and I I 100% want to play in the ISL at some point in my career but Right now, obviously, not just me, but like I've said, every single player I think who plays football in the whole world at some point wants to play in the Premier League in England. It's one, it's probably the biggest league and the most competitive league that every single player wants to play in. So for me now, I think that the dream is to play in the Premier League and obviously I want to represent my country, India. So I think now I am, I'm working so hard in taking them steps to, to get to the Premier League in England, which every single player all over the world, whether they're from England, Spain, Brazil, Italy, India, everyone wants to play in the Premier League and that's my dream as well. So I think right now my, my route to the, the Premier League is is maybe doing it in England where I've grew up and obviously I've seen a lot of my friends and players that I've played against go to the Premier League and that's my dream as well. So I think that I definitely do want to play in the ISL at some point but I think right now it's such a big dream of mine to play in the Premier League I think this is the best best route to go there and then hopefully like I said the the government and the Indian Football Federation come to an agreement to let me play for India so I can go over there and and experience the the Indian fans and play for my country and and do that but I think a, a massive dream of mine is to play for India and to play in the Premier League so to be able to do both would be be a perfect scenario. Uh, and I think yes, that should be your you know next major step in terms of your club career. That you know you should be going into the Premier League. And I think if you're playing in Premier League, will also inspire uh, other Indian origin players in Europe or kids in India. Because Jan is also about role model for the Indian Indian players back home. You know that if you can show them that you can play in Premier League, that can also change the uh, thought process of these young players. That one day they can also do that. So how do you take this thing, you know, that you can be a role model for not just the upcoming Indian origin players, but upcoming Indian players back in India? Uh, obviously, I, I came to India a couple of years ago for the first time and I loved it. I wanted to come back every single year, but obviously COVID happened, so I haven't been able to do that. But like I said, I love India so much. It's in my heart. My dad, my dad's mom, my dad's dad, they're, they're all from India. So... It's just amazing, like, country. I wanted to come so many times, but with COVID, it's been difficult. So I am trying to come this summer, and I'll try and come every every time I have time off football because, obviously, it's part of me, it's part of my family, and I want to come there again with my dad and experience and, and show the fans that I'm, I'm there and a role model and I care for them because the last time I went, I came and met as many people as possible and I loved it and they loved meeting me and asking questions and how they get better as footballers. So for me to be able to do it in England with Asian players coming up with similar to journeys to me is, is good. But being able to go over to India and actually meet kids who were born in, in India that have different pathway to me, but we're, we're still the same because we originally all come from the same place. So it's just important for them, kids in India, to to see someone like me playing in Europe and if that's what they want to do, then they can achieve it and play in the ISL and then hopefully, like we said, climb up the FIFA rankings and be able to transfer to Europe and play football there because, like I said, kids just want to play football and become professional footballers. So I didn't 
when I was a kid, I didn't get to meet a professional footballer who was the same as me. So I think it's important for me now to make sure I meet people and share my experiences with them for them to believe in themselves enough to say that they can do it and be better than me. Uh, last football question and then we'll come to some, uh, you know, your background and heritage question, couple of them. Uh, you, you touch upon that you had a chat with a couple of Indian players. Uh, who is, who is your, your, I hope that you have seen the Indian national team playing or ISL games. Uh, which Indian player you liked most? I think I'm, I, I will, I, I maybe will say Sunil Chetri, but I think just want to know that which Indian player you have watched playing and which Indian player you have liked till now. Yeah, Sunil Chetri, obviously everyone loves him. He's an amazing player, amazing stuff he does. He's amazing for the country and obviously um, a great captain. But another player, obviously Sunil Chetri is a great player that I love. And another player I like is um, Sahal Samad, plays for Kerala. Yeah. Yeah, 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 very good player. technical player, likes to turn, likes to dribble, make passes. So obviously I'm a, I'm a fan of his and think he's a very good player and has a good future ahead of him. Okay, uh, Yan, so let's let's come back quickly on your heritage. So Yan, being Punjabi, do you speak Punjabi at home? Because uh, I, I remember talking to Harmeet Singh once, you know, a couple of years back. He was in Norway at that time. He said, I don't speak Hindi, but I can speak Punjabi. Do you speak Punjabi with your parents or your grand, uh, grandparents? Uh, I can't speak uh, fluently. I know little phrases and understand little bits, but I uh, I was actually learning uh, to speak fluently when I was at West Brom. But when I moved to Liverpool, I worked with family. I moved away from family, so I haven't f- learned fluently to speak. But I can understand little things, and because my dad and my, my dad's mum are both fluent, and all my my dad's brothers, sisters, and all my cousins can speak, so. I'm around it quite a lot, so I've picked up on, on little stuff, but I'm not like, I couldn't have a conversation at the moment, no. Okay, and, and what about the Indian food? Uh, do you like the Indian food or you are yeah. considering your professional football and now so you, the, there's a diet plan and everything to follow, but on a cheat days, do you like Indian yeah, food? Yeah, I am. I actually, it's probably one of my favourite foods. Uh, I don't eat it much during the week, but after a game, when I go home, we have a, a really good restaurant by our house that we're friends with the owner and he makes the, the, the best Indian food. So, And obviously, when I came to India, every day I was eating it. I was on holiday, so I enjoyed myself. But yeah, I've, I love Indian food. And when I go home in Birmingham, I have I have quite a lot of Indian food after a game. But in Scotland, there's not too many where I live. But when I go home, we have one restaurant we go to all the time. And what is your favourite Indian dish? Uh, I like prawn, so maybe prawn, prawn curry, or obviously I don't really like the chapatis and you know, but I like rice curry, chicken okay. curry, prawn curry. But yeah, good. And and do, do you listen Punjabi songs? Uh, yeah, actually, when I'm in when I'm with my dad in the car when we drive, and my dad always has Punjabi songs on, so I listen to them. He loves Hindi music. He loves Punjabi music. So. When I'm in his car, he always has a man. So yeah, I've, I've learned a few songs. I don't any, know any, what any, to say, I, but I like the songs. Any any particular singer which you have followed recently or in past? Uh, yeah, my, my dad listens to like the Bollywood film movies, the slow songs and that. But okay. I, I like um, what's it? A P Dillon. A P Dillon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like him. I like that kind of like rap music, and yeah, I've listened to him quite a few times. So yeah, he's probably my favorite at the moment. And obviously, I was a massive fan of of Sidhu Muswala, so yeah. Yeah, I think very sad what happened with uh, the the Sidhu Muswala, but his recent song, which came, you know, uh, uh, which I think released a couple of days back, uh, with a big US artist, uh, released on his YouTube channel. Uh, you should. Uh, listen to it. Uh, I think very, very good song and which rem- reminds his fans about what Sudhu Musewala was all about. Uh, Yan, very great to have you uh, on the show. You know, and I think uh, there are lots of lots of things which get got clarified for the people to know. And I think, yes. you know, uh, it's easy for people to say just to leave your passport over the night. I think and I was just like that back in 2012, 13 when I was in college. You know, when this topic of Indian origin play used to come, I say, you know, leave your passport, play for India. And I think uh, while the time I have also matured enough to understand the other side, the player side, that, you know, it's, it's not that simple to change your passport over the night. And I think that's the whole point of this conversation, Yan. Hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully the uh, the players 
uh, the, the uh, Indian people, the Indian fans are now aware that, you know, why it is uh, not so easy to change the passport. And Yan, I hope that the conversation with you have with Mr. Saji Prabhakan can hopefully can make some difference. And, you know, uh, through this video and whatever we do going ahead will make some difference, you know, and maybe Indian government can change their policy and allow a talented footballers like Yan to play for their own country. I think it's not, it's not... Uh, right to you know to stop people to play for their own country just because they don't have particular document in in hand a uh, big thank you to yan to join us today on the podcast yan any any parting message for the indian football fans before we can wrap this up no i just want to say obviously thank you for all the support i get on twitter where i quite a lot over the, the past couple of weeks after the tweets went out so no i just want to say thank you and obviously hopefully soon i can represent our country and show what I can do and obviously the dream is to go to a World Cup it's the the fans dream it's my dream so hopefully we can come together you can see me play live and uh, hopefully I can score score many goals for India in the future it's a dream of mine and I'll keep pushing and until hopefully a change can happen so yeah I just want to say thank you for everything okay and all of our Kenlao's dedicated followers and listeners you can you can just you can listen the Beyond the Score podcast on at your leisure on Spotify, iTunes, Geo7, um, you know, at all the places alongside. You can also watch our all podcasts on our YouTube channel, KLAW TV, in the video form. Uh, thank you very much. We will see you in the next episode.